leave your phones outside again. Put your phone outside. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. You are on Real Talk Broadcast Network with Bishop Robert Johnson and the Acevedos. We are excited today because God is doing some amazing things. We're going to give you time to come in the room and share with us, with this amazing couple, what God is doing in their life for them and with them. So we're going to give you time. Make sure you invite everybody you know. Get all married couples in. Thank you for joining us. Um, Eddie Praise. God bless you, Eddie Praise. Um, make sure you share this video. And man, get every, invite everybody in. God bless you, the woman of God who's on, but she's sharing it and <laughs> invited her own self. God bless you, woman of God, Sister Acevedo. Um, everyone continue to invite everyone in because... We are about to talk to the woman of God who trusted God in the 30-day marriage challenge. Here with us today on the Real Talk Broadcast Network is Elder Ernie Acevedo and Sister Inez Acevedo. God bless you. Can you introduce yourself to our listening audience today? Praise the Lord. I am Sister Acevedo. Um, I have been married to Minister to Elder Acevedo for six years. Amen. I'm Elder Acevedo. I've been married for six years also. My yeah. beautiful wife. I've been a member of Love and Unity Outreach Church Ministries in the National for five of those years uh -huh. and just recently became an elder. Amen. Amen. So we're going to get into it because everyone wants to know what makes a relationship valuable. And when I say valuable, I mean to the point to where we all know that within the scope of life and relationships themselves, there are difficult times. Um, Sister Acevedo, because you took the 30-day challenge, mm -hmm. have you ever experienced a difficult time? And I don't want to go detail, but as a woman of God, what can you say was the most challenging time for you? Um, I, th I think the most challenging times were um, to honestly to remain silent okay. at certain times. Okay. And Elder Acevedo, what about you? The most challenging times? Yes. Uh, trying to get on the same page. I think the big thing with relationships is communication. Uh huh. And when the communication is broken or there's barriers or walls that have been built over a period of time, it's hard to get through those barriers, those walls, and break through them to get to that communication where both of you guys are on the same page. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. And, and what do you think attributed to or attributes for couples so they'll know if you can talk to couples? What makes those barriers and what? What creates those barriers that you feel? Trust. I think trust is a big issue when it comes to building walls, not trusting your partner. Okay. When you don't trust your partner, uh, you tend to be defensive or you put this wall wow. of defense up because you don't know when there's going to be an episode or when there's going to be a fault or when there's going to be something wrong. So you already, uh, a, mechani a mechanism that kind of triggers that defensive, even if nothing, nothing's wrong. Okay. But that, that, that defensive wall is still up. And trust is a big thing because you have to believe in your partner. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you have to have faith in your relationship. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, um, you have to break through those walls and you have to regain the trust um, and talk about things that will better relationship. A lot of things in the past you can't change. Sometimes we dwell too much into the past and it's more important to push forward than to look backwards so when you're starting to do those new steps in your relationship if it has been broken I would suggest to just communicate mm -hmm. not a lot of pressure on one another but just to open up to reintroduce yourself to re-understand and learn together about one another okay um, Sister Acevedo, mm -hmm. in, in regards to what Elder said to where those things that create barriers, mm -hmm. 
Um, what, how, how do you identify with what he was saying? I agree with what he was saying. Um, and see every uh, as I you know just kind of look back at our at our um, our marriage I can see everything that he was saying all the way up till now um, be uh, before going through the 30 day challenge and then after going through the 30 day challenge um, I have to agree with what he said trust is a is a a, 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 a real challenging thing when things have happened and to try to you know not look back but look forward and learn from them and grow stronger because of them is definitely what do you feel and how do you feel the 30-day challenge help you in regards to your marriage it helped me look at it differently my marriage differently um, it helped me realize um, you know uh, what's more important and how to be more successful in our, you know, in our family, and, and the impact that it is it creates for our children. It helped me to understand him more, and to see him, you know, in a different way than what I've used to seeing him or I've known him for so long. So it, it just helped me look at at things differently. Do you find peace now? Have you found peace? in those areas that because I want you to talk to women uh -huh. I want both of you to look in the camera and talk to people mm -hmm. and because there are a lot of people who are struggling yeah. marriage is not easy there's no handbook on marriage mm -hmm. so marriage itself is found and learned and created through time mm -hmm. all right a lot of people don't believe that but it is mm -hmm. so then how, how would you help women to better understand their husbands who might be who have fallen off a little bit to, to keep them and support them can you talk about that I, yeah, I would say honestly that the 30 day challenge, I encourage women um, who are struggling, who are trying to figure it out, who are trying that every day of what to do. And you know you love your husband, but all the things that are going on, I would encourage you to try that cha that 30 day challenge. Because even though, even some of the things that I go, okay, I, I, do, I do those things. Some things I didn't realize I was doing, or maybe I didn't do it, uh, maybe I can do it differently. So it, it really helps to have a better way of view of looking at things. It's not about, you know, it's, it's just about how you feel and, and where your heart belongs. And if you put your whole heart into it, it's going to make a difference. And you just have to trust God that it is going to make a difference and trust yourself and don't second guess it. Okay. You have um, a question that said, what, what's being done now that has not been done in the past to make your marriage flourish? For me, I, it, the setting the tone. The, that, the, the tone of the day sets everything going forth. And I think what we do now as a couple is that we try to set a positive environment in our household. And that just sets that tone for the rest of the day. And then we try to avoid things that may break that vibe. Um, it's easy to get sidetracked with things, especially if the household is in a good mood and, and everyone is in a joyful mood and all of a sudden you open up a bill and you see that something is overdue or this is coming up. And that can really get in the way of the vibe in the household. There are time and place for everything. If you can manage your life to the point where you won't allow the things that cause distractions in your relationship, then you'll find that 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 balance where you know you don't allow things to get in. You know, we'll set time for this, and we'll we'll get together, and we'll set a time for that. So that way we can have our time of enjoyment, and then when it's time for the business side, uh, we get to business. And you know, when it comes to running the household, so it, it's more of a management that we do now. We're more manageable on our time, when we spend it together, uh, if it's a movie night and we watch this, sit and watch TV, if it's just to have conversation, if it's in prayer or going into uh, scripture. Um, so we manage that time and it works a lot better for us that we have, we, when we do that, we seem to consider each other's time also. I consider her time for the things that she might want to do and she does the same for me. Uh, she knows that, you know, if I want to do something that she gives me that space. And it, and it takes down the uh, the anxiety of arguing, and you know we just seem to agree more. 
th- there's people out there. Let's get to the real. Because you know what? Facebook is controversial. Mm-hmm. Every controversial. Everybody don't want to hear the good stuff and don't want to hear, you know, la, 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 that's right, right. People want to hear the reality. Mm-hmm. What are some of the realities, Sister Acevedo, <laughs> that you can help women with that just, you know what, you got tired of and mm-hmm. you needed the 30-day challenge and you needed something different. You needed something to revitalize, you know what, just a marriage. Because this man, you do love. We all know that. Mm-hmm. You hurt somebody for him. Yeah. So so my, my, my point is, what 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 was it that you said, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm tired of this. We're about to get this together. It just didn't, it, it, the everyday things of, you know, that you go through, you just get, get burnt on. It felt like after, for a while, it just felt like we were just uh, existing with no purpose. And it just felt like, like Groundhog Day. And I didn't want Groundhog Day anymore in our in our in our lives in my life. I don't I don't want it. And so I, you know, I guess you could say what do they call that an epiphany. Mm-hmm. And um, I just wanted I wanted things to change in our house. It felt like a stagnant type feeling, and I didn't want that anymore. And so right. when I saw it, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna see if it really worked. Right. And it ended up doing so much wonders for it. So it, it yeah. Okay, Elder, what keeps you to focused on each other and nothing and nobody else? I, bottom line, tired of being sick and tired. Wow. Um, as you mature and you look at wasted time, um, not wanting to be stuck in the same place you were years before right. and waking up and no change has been made and... Uh, you know, you kind of get tired of just being sick and tired. Right. So you try to find a way to say, well, okay, if this is it and this is what God has for me, then I need to know how to keep this. Wow. And evidently, I haven't been doing a good job up to a certain point. So when we joined the church and we started seeking God, I got a great understanding of, of what it is to be in a covenant relationship, just not with my wife, but with God. And that helped a lot in my understanding of having a relationship. Uh, it's not a dictatorship. It's it's not something that you say it's my way or the highway. It's more of, of an understanding and, and learning and relearning, actually, because when you meet someone, I encourage everyone who's listening that if you've gotten yourself into a marriage before you've gotten into a relationship with the Lord, then it, it's a start over. It's just like when you get baptized and when you start that you become the new creature. When you, when you become the new man or the new woman in your relationship, then everything else becomes new also, just as the Bible said about us being believers. So now if you married in the world and then you become a believer and you're in the church and some of those worldly ways are still part of your relationship that's causing problems, then there's going to be problems. That it's going to have to be a start over with you and your spouse where you start to rebuild from that day one on what you want. A lot of things that we didn't discuss when we were before we were married because there were only certain things important to us at that time. It was just hanging out, just the moment. We were living for just the moment. And I had no idea what it was to be a husband. I just, you know, I don't know if a lot of men think this way. You go, okay, I want to make her happy and I want to let her know that she's the one. So let's go do this and now you have my last name and you're fine, right? You know, everything is good. You know, where we, you know, I had no idea about covenant relationship yes. or what really uh, took to make a real marriage. And I think once that was revealed to me, uh, for me, that I started managing myself. Amen. You know, so. I want to thank God for all those who are tuning in right now. Uh, Dr. Richard um, Ophi, God bless you. Um, God bless all those who are on. Evangelist, um, have faith, Buchanan. Amen. 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 Um, Amen. First Lady Sharon Breland. Amen. Amen. All those who are coming on today. Gwen Rhodes. Um, God bless you. Sister Moore, uh, uh, Pastor Moore or Evangelist Moore. Amen. God bless you. Um, God bless you. Um, my brothers and sisters from Africa and overseas. Amen. We really love you very much. Yes. Um, Eddie Praise. God bless you. Amen. We just thank God for all of those who are on today. If this is um, the talk with Elder and Sister Acevedo who... God had redeemed and restored their marriage, just like the marriage between himself and the church. Yes. Sister Acevedo, uh-huh. what are the intricacies now to keep the marriage whole or sane? What is the truth and what does that mean? It's just, you know, I, what, after the 30-day challenge was over, I didn't want it to stop. I wanted to continue with that 
that challenge and, and keeping it every day. So just like we do with our relationship with Christ, we have to, you know, um, seek him every day, die to ourselves every day for him. So in my relationship, I just wanted to continue that challenge and continue doing the things that made us successful in the 30 days. I wanted to keep going. Right. So as uh, the challenge showed me and I began to embrace it, that that's why I'm so proud to say that he is my Lord and I am his church and, and I see it more now than I did before. Right. And that's what I want to get to in the next segment. We have about five to ten minutes to go. Mm -hmm. But I want to get to this part again. God bless all those who are on with Real Talk Broadcast Network here on Facebook Live with Bishop Robert Johnson and the Acevedo family. Um, another question would be is um, when you say that he is your Lord and you are his church, mm -hmm. that might be difficult for some people yeah. because Sarah called Abraham Lord. Uh -huh. So could you guys both deal with that? Why would you, why? Now, I know because I'm the pastor, so God has given us that understanding. But where do you come up with this Lord and church thing? What does that actually mean? God bless you, Dom, Dr. Michael Smith. And we love you, man of God, praying for you. Well, for me, as I, you know, begin to my, my relationship and an understanding and reading um, and going into Genesis and reading about Sarah and, and Abraham and the promise that God gave to them, but just more or less just looking at Sarah, I began to see a little things in myself, uh, you know, Sarah and myself, just like I've seen other people um, in the Bible and myself. And as I understood where she was coming from, spiritually and naturally, and as I was, as I've been growing myself in, in my relationship with Christ, I begin to see and understand that just as Christ being my ultimate Lord and my Savior, and that how I am His and He is mine, I begin to see naturally my husband saying, "Well, wow, you are my Lord," because I look for the same things, not the exact same things, but I seek these things from my husband as I seek my relationship with the Lord. And so I see, Lord, you are my ultimate savior. You're my ultimate protector. You're my provider. I see my husband is my provider. He's my protector. And I'm like, oh, you're my Lord. So you're my lowercase Lord, but we know that the, the capital L belongs to our, our Lord and Savior. But I said, but I'm like, oh, I see you are my Lord. And I began to have faith in him as I have faith in my Lord and Savior. And so therefore, he is my Lord and he is my protector. So I see him as my king. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Elder, how, how is she figurative of a church? I see everything as a parallel of our relationship with God. And, and, and my relationship with God and all the things that, that he is to me. And all the things that he provides for me. And his instructions on how we are supposed to live. I see a parallel yeah. to the church that we are in, 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 in body to Christ as I see my wife and my child to me. Mm -hmm. So now that I have an understanding that I, well, how I look at her now as the things that I look at Christ is to me. So I'm supposed to be a provider. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be her comforter. You know, I'm supposed to be her way maker. I'm supposed to be the things that God is to me. So I see her as God sees me. So that reflection of that goes to her. So I, now I see who I am supposed to be as a man yes. in her life. Yes. <clears throat> and I try to fulfill those things in her life to stay parallel with, with God's word and what we wow. have together. But so, when she sees that in me and she sees that I'm following Christ and she's following me, then what she does is it become my church. She becomes yeah. My faithful one. She becomes my one that serves me. She becomes the one who is part of my small church that outside of my, my, my normal church, that physical church I go to. It, in spirit, there is just a oneness. And that oneness helps me understand the needs of what she wants as a wife and what my family needs as a household. So, yeah, I am the instructionist. I am the leader. I am the one who provides not just food or money, but the word. That I am the one who has to live what we read together. We, I'm the one who has to provide the way God said he provides for me and also provide for her. So Amen. as her as a church is Amen. that I see what God has given me. Mm -hmm. so, many, so many people today, 
living living in a glass house, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and I'm saved, sanctified, and my marriage, everything is great. Mm -hmm. I've been married 34 years. My church just walked in the kitchen. Uh -huh. <laughs> God bless her. And in those 34 years, to be honest with you, <coughs> Christ said, as he has suffered in the flesh, to arm yourself likewise. Uh -huh. There's been times where it's rocky. Uh -huh. There's been times where the balance is horrible. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's been times where things are just not right. Uh -huh. Things where she wanted to leave, I wanted to leave. That's what they're being saved. Uh -huh. How do you, 34 years, oh, yeah. how do you see yourself 34 years from now. 30, uh, how long y'all been married? Six. Six. 30, 20, 20, 24 years from now. Mm -hmm. How do you see yourself for 26 mm -hmm. years from now? I, Bishop, for me, I, the way I deal with things now, and, and, uh, and I'm pretty sure she'll agree with you, is that um, you know that every day is not going to be birds and bees mm -hmm. and roses Talk about and candy it. and Talk everything. Talk about so it. So we're real. giving that a vibe that we're sitting here, you yeah, know, we're the lily yeah, in the fields yeah, and you know that we don't have no problems. No, and no, is. man, she's... No, we have, we have our times. Yes. Uh, I think what we do now is is that... And, and sometimes I talk to her and if something comes up that changes the vibe in our household, she'll say, you know, babe, you know, this and this and that. And my reply to her is that it sounds about right. I go, yep, sound about right. Because I know that the enemy is forever working yes. on it. And when something comes against our relationship, I just tell her that sounds about right because I'm already prepared for what he's bringing forth. Yes. So what he's trying to manifest in our marriage, I let her know, like, sounds about right. So if a bill comes and it's overdue or something comes to throw off the vibe in my house, I just tell her, yeah, it sounds about right. That's right. But we go into prayer. And we know how to fight Ooh, yeah, that bye -bye. enemy. Yeah. So if you prepare yourself ahead for war, mm -hmm. you know, then you're already ready for the engagement of war because you've already prayed and got ready for that to happen. Man. So what happens is that we get in there and we already know what's going to happen. And when things start to, to, to try to make a turn in our relationship, we just look at each other and say, yeah, it sounds about right. He's active right now. Mm -hmm. We know he's active and he's trying to turn things around because he sees that we're heading in a good direction. So. You know that that you're going to be coming up against things in your marriage. Talk you're going to, to go through something. Prepare yourself. Arm yes. yourself now for tomorrow. Don't start living day by day. And when the enemy comes to attack you, you're not prepared Ooh. for Ooh. what he's bringing. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you're prayed up. Make sure that your wife is prayed up Teach, and your household man. is ready for the things that are going to come. I thank the Lord myself for the victories tomorrow, mm -hmm. today. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that we are victorious in our marriage. Wow. How do you follow up on that church? I don't know. I can't follow that. Yeah, how you talking? He said it. All I can say is ditto. Hey, Amen. God bless you, Amen. Sister Lemons, Sandra Lemons. God bless you. Um, sister or brother, um, Angeli. I can't pronounce your name. Please forgive me. God bless you for being on with us Amen. today. Amen. All those who have tuned in. We got about five more, five more minutes. And um, I was talking to my church about something last night. And sometimes when you're at the, and I want to echo what you said, Minister Elder Acevedo, when you're at the top of the pinnacle and God has given you, as Paul said, revelation and different things, and God has blessed you, the enemy's going to come in. I'm, I'm telling you right now, mm -hmm. it's not over with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been in ministry for 35 years, mm -hmm. and this year, I'm not going to say it's been the worst year, it's gonna, it has been the most challenging year of my 35 mm -hmm. years. Wow. When that time happens, how do you how do you see yourself dealing with it with your church? <clears throat> dealing with well, when I know that 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 challenge is coming, but I also know that the investment is great and the investment is worth the time and the effort and the praying in the middle of the night and to being there for your people and it's all the things that seem to wear you down from year to year. We have to stay mindful that there is a destination, mm -hmm. that we have to stay focused on the vision. Yeah. We have to stay focused on the instructions in the beginning. I, I even feel now, we talk about it a lot in our church at, at Love and Unity, is that we go back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because the beginning, some, there was a broken there where it had to establish the second, which is Jesus Christ, who had to come and, and die for our sins. So the vision was never taken away. It's always been the same being brought back to the beginning. So in our vision, the first thing that the focus is on is the vision. The challenges are going to come. Once we accept the fact that they are going to come because the vision is so great, also the challenges will be. Mm -hmm. So we have to come at peace with that, that understanding 
uh, that there will be those days where you want to throw up your hands and say that I'm, I'm done. I don't, I don't see anything becoming of this. Yeah. But that's just when, when the breakthrough comes through, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we, we have to see this through. Yes. You know? Amen. Amen. Yes. How do you as a couple, God bless you, Sister Jane Gray, um, you need to go on to the Facebook group page, um, Sister Jane Gray and Minister Jamal Ali. They're dealing and they're supporting human sex trafficking. Amen. And you can go join that group called Count On Me. Please go to the Facebook groups and search for Count On Me, Sister Jane Gray and Minister Jamal Ali. Also, you can tune in to GK, God Knows Radio Live, every morning at www.gk. GodKnows.org. God bless you. Also, now back to our couple before we close. Mm -hmm. If there was something coming your way and you didn't know the magnitude of it, but now God has restored and put your marriage back to where it's supposed to be, how would you handle that if it was dramatic or something that was trying to bring you down? How would you both handle it? Sister Acevedo first. Well, for me, I... To be honest, I probably take some deep breaths and just go to Christ, and just because I know, you know, I begin to look back at my resume with Him and see what He has done for me in those times where we were, where we were before. So I know that I have a a person, a, a someone that I can go back to, and it would be Him. So getting on my hands and 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 knees is just, I'll just go back there because I know that I can always count on Him no matter what. So. For me, if I were to see something or know something is coming, I'll, you know, to kill myself daily and to not allow the enemy in to my own thoughts, I would, you know, bite my inner lip and just go to Christ. Amen. Elder? For me, she laughs a lot when I always say this to her. I always tell her, be who you say you are. Wow. You know. Be who you say you are. Wow. I, that causes a lot of problems in relationships, too, because some people are just faking it. You know, they're, they're right. wearing that mask right. and, and they're not being who they say they are. Right. You know, that first thing in a relationship, once you, you have a clean slate and you're starting over again, be who you say you are. And what I mean by that is, is that I don't want no recurrence, reoccurrences of problems that we've had in the past wow. that we've overcome. Wow. You know, that God has brought us out of. So I'm saying, if you are who you say you are now, and we're starting a new and an understanding of our relationship, be who you say you are. Because it'll come out in the end. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not who you say you are, it'll come out just a little while. Just wait a little time. Uh, there's a saying, they say, uh, keep living. Yeah, live you know, living. You keep living, and you understand that uh, sometimes you will... Uh, Get tired, like I said in the beginning, of being sick and tired. And the only way that you're going to make a breakthrough is when, and, and men, if, if men are out there. Um, they're on, they're listening. I, 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 this, this is a, a men responsibility. This is a man's responsibility to be in line and in tune with himself and with his God. It's not about what she's doing and she's doing this and she's causing this. and cause, Because if you find yourself in a place where you know to be faultless, mm -hmm then you can deal with situations of fault. Mm -hmm. But when you find yourself in a place where you're faulty, then how can you wow. accuse someone else of being faulty? Wow. So it has to be starting with yourself. Wow. If something, you want this, this, this mechanism or this machine, you want it to work, you have to be a functional part in that relationship. Amen. So, Amen. You know, um, it's hard. Uh, you know what? And, and, and just to get to the real nitty gritty, but we just like every other couple. I mean, you know, uh, one day, one day, some things, everything is great. And you wake up next morning and it don't seem like everything is so great. And you scratch your head and look in the mirror, going like, you know, what just happened? We just had a, it was yeah, a good yeah. night last night. And now all of a sudden we're going back into the same. We've been things. there, church. Yeah, but uh, we've found ways to deal with that right. and 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 to keep what is focused in uh, our relationship in which is, is those four letter words is love. Yeah. Uh, I tell my wife all the time, I said, let's not wait to the last uh, minute mm -hmm. to show how much we care or want to say to each other. Yeah. Because I've seen in reality, 
I've seen people love more love a person when they're in the hospital, mm -hmm. when they think they're gonna die, when something happens to them, or when yeah. they are at the funeral home. Yes. Yeah. Then they want to tell them how they I'm would do sorry. anything to yeah. get them back. Uh -huh. They wish they were able to say what they wanted to Thought say. Elder. They want to cry all oh. over the casket, Thought and they do these things. Oh, but yeah. all these things are gifts, and they're given to you to yeah. be used right now. Don't hold on to uh, to things that don't matter because. You can be mad at someone about something, but if something was to happen to that person, yeah. you would forget what you were mad about. If I may say really quick, because what Elder uh, is saying is so um, real and true, that even in the midst of what we were going through, he made me think about it, because that actually happened with me, my own personal self, when we were at that, that so-called breaking point, or it, you know, it looked like it was a breaking point, I had to go in for a surgery that I didn't know if I was going to come out of. And because of that moment, we weren't even talking. But what I told my sister, uh, Sister uh, Missionary Gray, my last words before I'm going in is to please tell him I love him. Because at the end of the day, everything that happened to us, I still loved him. And, and, it, and, it, and that's what I, I lean on so much is the love that I have for him is what I'd hold on to. And because I love him so much, Lord, tell me what do I have to do to keep that love. I love you too. I love you too. I love you too. That's really my mommy and my daddy. Hey man, uh, one more question and we'll be done. Um, Elder, I want to tell you something, man. Yes, sir. You came to Christ and you laid your all on the table. Yeah. You laid and you did not care what anybody no. thought about you. No. That is a type of Apostle Paul. Are you ready for that journey as a pastor? And um, Sister Acevedo, okay. are you ready for that journey knowing that the Bible says whatever we sow, we're going to reap. Uh -huh. So things Mother and I have been through in ministry is because of our past. Are you ready for that journey in, of the opposition that's going to come in your life? I believe God will make me ready. Okay. <laughs> I, I, honestly, whatever he has for me, I'm going to be ready for because he's equipped us already before we were even born. Yes. So whatever it is that he has for our life and what path he has us on to build his kingdom, it's about him. It's not about us. So wow. whatever he has for us to do, he's already equipped us with the tools and, and the tool belt to be able to do those things. So... Whatever it is that he has for me, let it let his will be done, not mine. Because most people judge their past and say, you know what, I don't want to give back what I did, so I'm not going to put myself in that position of being responsible. Mm. I, you know what, and I think that's the biggest thing when when it's accepting responsibility, yeah. right. being accountable. Uh, if you can play the background, you don't think you you have to be accountable or or be responsible for anything more or less than your you're more or less than yourself. For me. Um, and it was that case. Uh, God has given me something that he's entrusted to me, but yet I don't trust myself. Wow. So that took a lot of overcoming to say, you know, it, it, there's many nights that I pray and ask God, why me? Or, well, you know, what what am I doing? But I'm questioning a God who knows all. So why am I not having more confidence in what God has given to me? Because evidently God has confidence in you, but why you don't seem to have confidence in yourself. Mm. So I, I, I've come to a Teach point me. now in my life that I am, I'm realizing, just like my wife said, it's not about you. And it never was about you. It was about the assignment entrusted wow. to you. Yeah. And I, that assignment is all that I need to know. Everything else will be provided for me. It's not like I'm going to get these lists of instructions on how to do it <laughs> because he's already made provisions yes. for what he has for me. Yes. And I need to stop thinking about the things that's going to come tomorrow. Let God handle those things that I'm going to come up against. It. He's already made provision for Teach, and just step into Teach. his calling, step into what he has for me. Accept the assignment. No greater assignment you know, can be given by any man but by Christ. So the assignment, more than the title, is precious to me. So Amen. I didn't know that, but it was revealed to me. It took a little time because he knew I had to go through some things first before I was ready for that assignment. God had both of you, man. It had nothing. Anything that you've ever went through in your life is will be is because of God and what He's doing on your in your life. I, I want to share this with you before I close. God does not give 
his authority or his power just to anybody. We can see that throughout the Bible. Mm -hmm. Paul, the, the other apostles did not have revelation mm -hmm. like Paul. Yeah. The other apostles did not have what Paul had. Um, no one had what Abraham had. Mm -hmm. Yet the Bible says Abraham was from an idolatrous place. So what am I saying? God will use your past to destine your future. Mm -hmm. So we want to thank you for coming on today. Yeah. I thank, thank God for the Acevedos. Yes. Thank God thank you for, for having us. God bless Thomas. everyone. Thank you for coming on. Yes. Good morning. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Sister you. Tanisha Thomas, God bless you, daughter, Amen. for coming on. Praise we really Lord. love you. Praise we Lord. miss you, and we thank God yes. for you. Yes. And we thank God for everybody who is on today. Yes. We're going to let them have closing remarks. My closing remark would be to encourage the women to do to do be a part of that 30-day challenge even if you think you're like well i already do some of this stuff it will open your eyes to do more to want to do more by the end of the time you will want to do it it's not something that's it'll become a part of you so i encourage each and every one of you to to do the challenge and if you don't have a husband to do the 30-day challenge for christ and give it back to him because he's your husband until God, until he says it's time for you to have your physical husband. So give the challenge back to him. And I, I just encourage that. Amen. Elder. I, men, if you're listening out there, if you're lined up, stay lined up. If you need realigning, then realign up. Realign yourself with your relationship with Christ. Realign yourself up with your relationship with your spouse. Wow. Realign yourself up with your children and everything around you. Wow. It's never too late. We have wow. to thank God for the grace that he has given us. Mm -hmm. And we have Wisdom. to thank him for his everyday mercies. Mm -hmm. We cannot take advantage of the time that Wisdom. God yeah. has given us. So do it today. Make, make the... the uh, investment into yeah. your life change the situation around you can't set the tone set the spirit set the atmosphere in your household start today start with your wife start with your children mm -hmm. and, and your relationship with your family whether it's your mom or your dad or what start today realign wow. your relationship up and, and and get to a point at peace it's up to you no one can force a man to do anything until he's ready to accept it yeah. so man if that didn't help you in any i hope i was and God bless you. Amen. Amen. Evangelist, Missionary Jane Grace, say, amazing. Acevedos, I love you both. Love I see you. the work Amen. of God. Amen. Can you tell us a little bit more about the 30-day challenge, daughter? She's um, Missionary Grace said she wants more about the 30-day challenge. I know we're over the time, but we're going to allow that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, you want to know more about it? it right. Uh, what, what, what led you there? What were some of the positive? What were some of the things that it talked about? What were some of the things that it suggests doing? And where did you hear about the 30-day challenge? Oh, well, the 30-day challenge was on um, on Bishop's, uh, I guess his... Real Talk blog. Real Talk blog. There you go. And so when I seen it advertised on Facebook, I decided out of curiosity, I was like, let's see what this is about. And I opened it, and it, it helped me to understand some of the things like, um, I guess the example... Uh, Elder Acevedo had said was, you know, I woke up every morning, you know, with a different attitude where I was saying, let's pray. I, you know, gave him some encouraging words, a smile when he got home throughout the day, giving him, um, it talked about giving him, you know, little encouraging things um, of what he uh, meant, how he means to me and, and um, uh, praise him on the things that he does and all the things that he lacks. It helped me to communicate with him better in a way of not coming at him like he's uh, where I'm demeaning him, but encourage him to do it a, in a different way. Um, so I'm, I'm building him up. I'm not tearing him down. And so it, it taught me how to do those things. And it taught me how to, like, you know, be silent a little bit. Just, you know, it's, it's not always, you don't have to always respond to everything. Sometimes it, it helps to close your mouth, bite your inner lip. I bit my inner lip a few times, and, and it helped me because that, that meant that, Lord, I'm trusting you to take care of what's going on. And it just helped me understand that. It helped me communicate better. It helped me to see him differently and to wow. and bring peace to the house. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So God bless you for yeah. tuning in with Bishop Robert Johnson 
and the Real Talk Broadcast Network here in Bellflower, California, where you have been on with the Acevedos. Amen. Amen. An amazing couple that shows that there's no failure in God, and God can do anything but fail. If you are in a marriage and your marriage seems like it's failing, trust me, God won't allow it. Amen. I, me and my wife have been through hell and back. But after 34 years, we are still here. Yes. Right now, Amen. couples Praise are divorcing God. all over America. Mm -hmm. You don't have to divorce. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is trust God, on, communicate, yes. talk on, about Richard. it, and it will get better. Yes. Yeah. But make sure you tell them everything. Yes. yes, That's critical because trust is the nuance that leads to love. On, so Amen. God bless you today bless for tuning you. in. You have been on with Bishop Robert Johnson and the Acevedos of The Real Talk broadcast network. Yeah, God bless.